institution. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we, yes. Can. yes we can. We do welcome we the president of the Nigerian Institution of yes. Values. ESV, sir. Okay. I will kill you. Okay. The first vice president, ESV John Bull or Amayabo. The it second vice president, you all past president of our institution, all management and council members, the chairman of the board of estate surveyors and valuers registration board, the registrar of the board, our distinguished speakers of the day, fellows, associates, and noble colleagues. We say welcome to our second Zoom lectures titled The Female Ethics of Value in Public Sector. Our first Zoom lecture titled Impacting Professionalism in Real Estate Educators, held on the 21st of August 2021, was very impactful, beneficial, and worthwhile. Today, we shall experience something greater than the first. But before we do that, I have the honor to introduce the moderator of the day. In the person of ESV Justina Odua, thank you. Wishing you all a very impactful time. Please, may I introduce to you Justina Odua Bong, Okereke, fellow of our institution. Thank you, moderator. Please, you can take over. Good morning, noble colleagues. Good morning, madam. I hope everyone can hear me clearly. Good morning. Yes. Yes, we can. Good morning. I welcome you yes, all once you. again. I will start by taking the opening prayer. I will call on ESV Adesumbo, Adesumbo, to open us with a prayer. Good morning. Bismillah Ramoni Rahim. Aliyam Jilai Rabbi Alami. Ramoni Rahim. Moli Chiyo Mijin. I cannot do it. I cannot stay. We do not swat our mistakes. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you, give him a good Amen. 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 I'll quickly run down and let us know what we have for today. We have three resource persons who will be speaking to us, and they will be handling the topic: female estate survey and value in the public sector. Each of them will have 20 minutes to speak to us, and there will be a time of interaction where you have questions to ask and answers, and you make contributions. You can also share your views in this sector and share your experiences, all in um, relating to the talk of today. We will also expect our national chairman to address the women and appreciate them in what they are doing in this profession. We also expect an opening remark from our pro tem chair and we'll take things from there. But I'll please, I want to ask and appeal to everybody, if you are not doing anything now, you should mute yourselves, mute your devices so that we can hear ourselves. When you have a function to perform, you unmute. And when they let us start, we should put off our videos to help the bandwidth so that the audio will be good. It's an appeal, please. And we should also rename our devices so that they will capture your attendance. We should rename our devices to our names and not what our phones are called so that we can capture that attendance. I would like to call on um, our national president. Sorry, I would like to call on uh, our pro tem chair lady. Yes, the Bridget Oraye to give us her opening remark, please. Good morning, noble colleagues. Good morning. Good morning. Please, I want to start on the already. Good morning. Good morning. I want to start on the already established protocol. And I want to really appreciate our three speakers that have agreed to share their experiences with us. This is our second lecture. The first one was quite impactful and up. And I know that with the three distinguished speakers we have, they are, they've learned the rope and they're here to share with us how they rose to the pinnacle, the pitfalls, the challenges, and 
how we can all over, overcome the challenges. That is part of what we do. Listen and learn from the words of these great women. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. I'll call on our uh, president, the national president, ESB Third Chief Emmanuel Okasmike, to give us a speech. Okay, th thank you, moderator. I think I will allow my first vice president, who is the officer supervising uh, professional bodies and other arms of the institution, to make his comments. Because if I if I give my remark, um, the lecture will start. Uh, because according to protocol, I will speak last. Uh, I want to invite the first vice president to make his uh, to make his remark if he's on this if he's in this meeting. Okay, Mr. First, president, we'll invite. Um, I'm inviting uh, our first vice to make his remark in the person of ESV John Boo e. Amayobo. Please, you have the floor. First vice, please. Oh, I, I, I saw his name on uh, on the attendance. I don't know whether he's still here. His name is there. He is. He is. Okay. I think it's just network. Please, would we at this point mute ourselves and maybe our videos to improve the network for everyone, please? Is an appeal. Are you hearing me? Yes, we yeah, can hear you, sir. Go ahead. Ah, uh, okay. My president. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Good morning, my president. Uh, the chair, potent chairman of this wonderful body, all the ESCOs, uh, the elders of this body, noble colleagues. I'm privileged and honored to join you today. I first of all want to apologize that I was not able to join in the last one. So I hope uh, I will be forgiven. Uh, I don't have so much actually to say, but to let you know that uh, this current administration uh, have so much in store for our women. And I want to reveal to you here that our president wants more participation of our women in our activities. And I also let you know that in our management and council meetings, he has always been advocating for that. And uh, he's ready, as you can see, to always support the women. And we know the valuable roles women can play in any society or organization. And we are happy to have the quality of women we have, caliber. So I, on behalf of our president, management committee and council, welcome you all to this second lecture and uh, surely we know that uh, we will have something to take home today mrs moderator of man on that note let me yield to my one and only chief sir emmanuel okasuki our president thank you and god bless you. thank you sir for your very encouraging remarks Shall we have our president speak to us now? President, thank you. sir. Thank you very much, ma'am. The first vice president, the second vice president, if is in this meeting, the chairman of the protein committee and other committee members, my noble colleagues. Let me first of all congratulate you once again for this wonderful lecture that you want to hold this morning. And most especially the team and the sub teams that we have actually yamaked to discuss this morning. I was in the ceremony about uh, two weeks ago in Lagos, and uh, one barrister, Mrs. Mbadiwe, 
made a presentation. And in her presentation, she said that what they are trying to do is to make every working place comfortable for the woman. And in that place, she made a suggestion of some of the things they are trying to do. And one of them, because they asked her a question, said, it's a construction, we went for an award, a CED magazine. And she was like, well, they look at construction industry as mainly for the male folks and that it is not better for the woman. And she said, no, that all we need to do is to make the working environment suitable for the woman to work. And that one of the things they're advocating for recently is for them that in every working place, there should be a place for a nursing mother. There should be a place for a, a pregnant woman. And what that means is that in every office you are working, you can actually have your condition and still work to a certain level. And one of the things she suggested was that in any place you are working, there should be a place like a um, nursing room, a place where you can take your child, nurse your child, breastfeed your child, and still go back to work. If you are pregnant, a place where you can, when it is time for you to eat yourself or for you to relax, there should be a place where the woman can actually go and do that. And that what they are encouraging the architects who are women is that in the present day design, especially for commercial buildings, that they should provide such places where women can actually have their own peculiarity. Because these are peculiarities to women. Men are not involved in, in breastfeeding children. Men are not involved in pregnancy. Even though uh, in, other, in other countries, they, they have allowed a man-to-man -man marriage. But we are going to see how a man will get pregnant to bring out a child. That will not work because they are challenging God and that God will not allow it to happen in Nigeria. So for us who are estates of yours and valuers, okay. we must discuss issues that are very peculiar to the women. Why I'm bringing this is for, for, the, for those who are going to speak to us today and for the, for the women's wing to realize that one of the things we want to achieve in this administration is to position the women in such a way that they can compete in any, in any situation, both in the administrative and the professional level. And at the end of the day, place a woman where he or she can even run the institution. Me, I'm praying for the day where a woman will become the president of the institution. I want to see the day because that was what uh, SS, late essence of your SPO for the, 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 the I think he was the third president or the seventh president advocated for in Lagos before he died. He said he, his dream is to see when a woman will become the president of this institution. And I know that we have capable members who can actually run this, run this institution. So, like I said, that this women's wing is not a political ground. But that does not mean that you cannot aspire to any position in the institution. I'm praying to see more women in council. Now, today we have women who are uh, branch chairmen. We had them before, like the, the former chairman of Ogun State, Ibironke, like the former chairman of uh, uh, Kaduna, Kaduna, Kaduna State, uh, Luakure. Because when they were in council, I was in council. And I used to encourage them. In fact, I was calling the two of them my wives in council. When I enter council, I will make sure that both of them stay beside me, one on the left, one on the right. I was doing that to encourage them to come up. And I'm happy that today they are, they are uh, Ms. Oluakure was the national treasurer and now she's still a member of council. So women should come out for position. Gone are the days where they said women belong to the kitchen. No, we have... Uh, an icon, a, a woman who is the president of ICANN. And she is doing well. The last, the last person, uh, the chairman of uh, uh, CITN, Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, is also a woman. She just handed over. Because when you go for uh, the uh, APBN, Association of Professional Bodies, where you have the presidents and the vice presidents go for the meeting, you find out that women are actually building up. So I want to encourage you work together, look at the things that are peculiar to the women. How will the institution solve those problems? I have just given you an idea of how a woman is trying to 
improve the working condition, the working environment of a woman. That if you are in construction industry and you, 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 you are going to the site, what happens? Maybe you have your baby by you. Will you be able to carry the baby to the site? If, that, if those facilities are provided, what it means is that you can actually carry out your responsibility as, as, uh, as the person that is holding the, the home front, that is the housewife, which of course, many people don't want to answer, but that is the truth. You are the person that is holding the home front. And without the piece of the home front, the man cannot do anything. You can see that his productivity will be low. So you have two critical assignments given to you by nature. One is that you are in charge of the home, and two is that you have to carry out your professional career. Nobody wants to stay in the house. No, I don't know of anybody. I don't know of any woman that wants to stay in, in her husband's house to answer a housewife. And I want to be happy that you people have chosen this profession as your career. And we are here to assist you. So on behalf of the National Council, on behalf of the first okay. vice president, the second vice president, the National Council and the entire membership of the Nigerian Institute of Estates of Yours and Valuas, we want to encourage you to continue to work together for the benefit of the women and for the institution and for the profession at large. So that the young girls that are coming after you will also see something that will encourage them to hope. Another thing I want to encourage you is that you have to do mentorship because a lot of our young uh, essence of your female essence of your and valuers are not actually taking the course very seriously. I want to see a situation where the young, the young females of yours will be in a position that when we want to call for committee members, they, they are visible for you to see them and they are willing to work and they can compete favorably with the with the main with the main uh, with the main members so i want to thank you very much for organizing this seminar and i pray that god will give us the the knowledge the wisdom and understanding that at the end of this lecture we shall all go home better off than we came thank you i hereby on behalf of the national council declare this lecture open thank you and god bless you all thank you, thank you very much thank you very much uh president thank You've you very much very sir. supportive You've always encouraged us. We thank you that you're advocating for a better working environment for the women in our different offices. And you're all, you also believe in us that we can make it to the highest capacity in our profession. Thank you very much, sir. And while the president was speaking, our second vice joined us. So we want to acknowledge the presence of our second vice president in the person of ESV Victor A. Alonge. You are welcome, sir. We are going to be moving on and we are going to, it's now time for our lectures. But before we call on the first speaker, we will take her citation. So we'll call on um, Mrs. ESV Eniola Adel Aladeji to take the citation for this first speaker, please. ESV Eniola Oladeji, could you please take the citation? Good morning, madam. Good morning. Yes, good morning, noble colleagues. Uh, I would like to, my name is uh, Esther Sovia Valua Eniola Oladeji from Ogu State Branch. And I would like to recognize the presence of our national president and the first vice president and the second vice president, all other national executive present and all duly observed. Essence of your value Ajia, Ogu, Ibirunke, FNIVS, RSV, MBA. Essence of your and value Ajia, Ogu, Ibirunke is a la nomina of Yabatek College of Technology Yaba Lagos, and had a postgraduate diploma in education from University of Ibadan. Ibadan and master's in business administration, MBA, specializing in marketing from Lagos State University, Ojo, Lagos. Essence of your value, Ogu started a professional career at Mark Oju and Co. Essence of your value in Lagos in 1998, where she was trained and as a pupil estate surveyor, she rose to head the agency and management department. She worked briefly at city commercial and industrial enterprises, Oregon, 
a construction company in Lagos as an estate manager. Hajia Ogun later joined Ogun State Property and Investment Corporation, OPIC, in 1997 and rose to the position of the director of estate facilities from June 2018 to date. She has attended various courses and training in property and facility management, among others, and many seminars around the world. Ajia Ibirunke was the first female fellow of Nigerian Institution of Estate Survey and Valua in Ogun State, the mm -hmm. first female chairman of Nigerian Institution of Estate Survey and Valua in Ogun State, and occupies several positions at the national level of the institution. She is a registered member of SS Surveyors and Valuers Registration Board of Nigeria, SVABON, member of the Nigeria Institution of Management, NIM, member of the Association of Professional Bodies of Nigeria, APBN, to mention a few. Hajia Ibiroke possesses many personal attributes, among which are ability to plan, manage, organize, and control effectively. Excellent in interpersonal inter relationship and commercial skill. Ability to endure and face challenges. Ability to adapt to new system and culture. Conflict resolution and arbitral skill. Religious and God-fearing. Essence of your value are broken and erudite and outstanding essence of your value for excellence. It's a freelance consultant on real estate issues, both on private and public sectors. Essesovia and Valua Ibironke is a philanthropist, embodiment of great minds, styling and selfless personality and past president of Rotary Club with many accolades. Good morning. May I welcome to the podium this morning, Essesovia and Valua Ajia Ogu Ibironke. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have a first speaker. Come on board, please. Thank you. Yes, we are correct. Thank you and good morning, madam. Good morning. My national president. Please just a minute. Okay. The national president, the first and second vice president of our institution, the potent chair, all leaders of our institution on board today. I want to say good morning, this beautiful morning. Uh, I will go straight to the lecture. We have been given the challenge to talk on female estate surveyors and valuers in public sector. Am I on? Yes, Hello? we can hear you very well. You're, you're on, ma'am. Thank you so much. My lecture has been shared so I can, we can go along together. Well, from that uh, major topic, I've thrown down my to a subtopic that talked about women, the, 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 well, it, 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 I'm going to take the introduction part of the topic and then talk about what we expect of an estate surveyor and value female in the public sector. Greetings to all our distinct in the individual president, Iazwe Mawike, fellow of the institution, the organizer of this lecture series, ably led by interim chair Iazwe Bridget, fellow of the institution, and our team for the bri these brilliant ideas. Distinguished ladies, leaders, and noble colleagues. Nigerian Institution of Estates of Your Valuers 
naives. Is a Nigerian body taxed with establishing a high and reputable standard of professional conduct and practice in the landed profession throughout the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is also mandated to secure and improve the technical knowledge which constitutes land economy. A female estate surveyor and valuer in the public sector is not different from the male counterpart. The saying that what a man can do, a woman can do better, should be more applicable to any female estate surveyor and valuer in the public sector. For instance, the 1994 Declaration of Philadelphia added to the Constitution states that in human beings, whatever their race, creed, or sex, have the right to pursue their material well being and spiritual development in condition of freedom and dignity, economic security, and equal opportunity upon 1996. What this phrase is saying in, in effect is that both sexes have equal right to pursue what it finds fulfilling for its existence. I'm sure you all agree with me with that. In that wise, women have the same rights as men in trying to achieve their desired career and as such should not should not be deprived, deprived or denied of such right because of cultural belief rather than their inability to perform such task. Let's now go to female estates of your value in the public sector. I'd like to take my discussion by introducing who are female estates of your value in the public sector. A female estate surveyor and valuer in the public sector is a woman who engaged in the profession of estate surveying and valuation and registered with the with <coughs> excuse me, registered with the estate surveyors and valuers registration board of Nigeria, ex Verbon, and works in the public sector, be it at federal, state, or local government level. Such female must have an initial professional knowledge and skills with a formal education in estate management and valuation, either at the level of university degree or higher national diploma in the polytechnic, both must be an accredited institution. Such graduates is required to undergo a period of supervised practical experience of two years and passing professional qualifying examinations and professional practice examinations as applicable. Are you with me? Hello? We are with you, you ma'am. Very well. Good, good, Can good. Can you very well, ma'am. Thank you so very much. Employment into public sector. Having completed the university or polytechnic education in estate management and valuation or related course of study, the, pre and the entry prerequisites for absorption in public sector may be slightly different from one organization to the other. However, fresh graduates without experience it started on level eight while an experienced or registered estate surveyor and valuer may be graded on level nine, that depends on each organization though, but shows the discrepancy between the order of degree and diploma. I'm sure that's another topic entirely. I wish uh, we, we will be able to tackle that because I'm one of those that, um, uh, that had that issue as a diploma holder. And I know what I went through, but I'm sure things can get better. While a degree holder is placed on land officer grade, a diploma holder is placed on estate officer grade until when such person 
is professionally qualified. And it is what it is worthy to note that the career progression terminates on grade level 10 or 12, depending on each organization without a professional uh, certification. Well, I hope this is real and it's true because uh, what I understand was uh, that anybody that has not been registered will, will stop being uh, elevated from level 14. And um, the other person that has BLC, we continue to move even to grade level 17, even, on, even without get, being registered. I'm sure that is being corrected. And if not, our president is here. So that will need to be visited. Female lesters, surveyors, and valuers in the public sector are expected to have professional values ethics and behaviors for reason that they meet with public in the process of discharging their duties. Let's now look at the fundamental principles of female estate surveyors and valuers in public sector. The on the listed are expected of a female estate surveyor and valuers in public sectors, the conduct. A female essay surveyor and valuer must conduct herself in accordance with ethical principles as identified in the Code of Professional Conduct for Registered Essay Surveyor and Valuers. We are not new to this. And uh, maybe our young ones, like our president, have charged us that we should mentor them. We can always make sure that we ask them to have the book and then take that as their Bible or Quran so that they can get themselves acquainted to what is expected of them as a practice, in a, as an estate of your value, either in practice or in the public sector anyway. Character. A female estate of yours and valuers must demonstrate good character and reputation in all dealings with co-workers, clients, and public. Integrity. Female estate of yours and valuers must be straightforward and honest in all our professional and business relationship. Of course, we know this. Uh, we say we are nobles, but sometimes we still see some of us behaving in such a way that we will be imagine that, uh, do, are we really noble? I'm sure we can improve on this. Integrity matters in anything we do. An instance of your in public sector is not expected to use as still for valuation once still under the employment of government, though can carry out valuation for in-house use only without compromising the valuation standard. Compliance. The female estates of yours in the public sector must comply with all conditions of any statutory system of existing status relating to the practice in their place of work. Of course, we know all this. Each, each of the organization, they have their rules. And uh, the only thing that would distinguish a female estate of your valuers in all this organization is most of this we are talking about, compliance. Once you have a basic rule in your organization, you are expected to go by them and then practice them, let people know you for what you have and as a professional person. Professionalism, they are good to professionalism. Female estates of young and valuers in public sector shall act diligently to produce work timely in accordance with applicable legal, technical, and professional standard of our workplace. Of course, we all know this. I know we have issues on timeliness in what we do, but sometimes we are handicapped because we are instruments of government and we all know what the political terrain is in Nigeria and in each organization, but that notwithstanding, if we have a file on our own table and we do it to time and it's passed to the next stage, I'm sure we'll have less blame as a person that is uh, delaying the job. But most times the, 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 what we know and what people talk more of in the public sector is, uh, is that works are too slow. But sometimes it may not really be the fault of the officer in charge. It could be the system. 
It is advisable that female estates of your value in the public sector should train and retrain themselves up to the, the date knowledge and skills on regular basis. Well, let's look at conflict of interest. Female estates of your in the public sector are not expected to engage in private practice of any kind while still in services, except those in academics. Of course, I'm sure we all know that. But sometimes, you know, mom must work. You always say that there's always this PP, but definitely you shouldn't conflict with our, our work in the office. Personal interest in issues of official works should be avoided as a public officer. The interest of the organization should be paramount. Accountability. Female estates of your and values in the public sector shall be accountable for any failure to comply to either the ethical principles of conduct or the competent application of professional knowledge and skills. Accountability, we all know what it is. How many of us are accountable to what we do? You cannot be a, a, a senior person and you will pass blame down to your junior ones. So that is the more reason why you have to be up and doing. Once a work is given to you, you ensure that it is done and you monitor and mentor and direct those behind you so that you as a senior will take the, 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 the uh, reward or you take the blame either way. So it's always better that you do what you are expected to do, carry them along, assign jobs to them. Don't just do the work all the time and you feel because I'm in charge. No, because when you do your work all alone, you take the blame when, it's, when there's fault all alone. Objectivity. Female estates of yours in the public sector should not by whatsoever reason or reasons allow conflict of interest, I've said that before, or undue influence or bias to override our professional judgment. Of course, we've said this, and that you have to be very, very objective. Let people know you work for what you have. You're a professional, be a professional. Don't stay in between. When you have things to do, advise your organization applicably and professionally. They may say you are too rigid, but at the end of the day, they will know you for what you stand for and they will always appreciate you as a professional person. Dedication and devotion. Female estates of yours and followers in public structure should devote her attention, energy and expertise to the service and subject, any, subject to any rule of law to act in a manner consistent with the best interest of public service rule without discredit our reputation and that of our profession. Of course, this is well explained and we all know what we are talking about here. So we should dedicate and be devotion in what we do. Disclosure of interest. Hello? Please, Ma, you have five minutes. Oh, I, I'm Next. going to be done before five minutes. I, I'm sure of that. Well, uh, we, I was talking about dedication and uh, being uh, and devotion to work. So we should be dedicated and we must ensure that we, uh, we put our best in whatever we do as a female estate survey and value. Disclosure of interest. Female estate of yours shall not do any acts whereby for a professional benefit or gain, she abuses or takes advantage of the confidence reposed in her. Of course, I think I've mentioned this. You, you have to make sure that uh, you don't abuse the office to which you are put. You, you could say because you are the most senior, you're, you are the leader and you deny others of what is due to them. This, of course, will come back to you and you will gain it. You know, once you don't carry your subordinates along, a lot of them in civil service, they have a way to do things that might implicate you. So from the beginning, you must be seen as a leader or a, a, a professional person 
that carries every other person along. Privilege and confidentiality. Either oral or written communications made by an employer organization to female assist of you in the normal course of professional engagement and privilege and shall not knowingly be used be used a confidential information or secret of her organization to the advantage or disadvantages of her or of a third person unless the organization consents after full disclosure or when permitted by law or a court order or necessary to protect the profession, professional interest in legal proceeding. Of course, we all know what this is. Sometimes you are handicapped. You, you cannot be a civil servant or a, a person working with the government and you on your own disclose certain things. No, you, you are guided by confidentiality. You must take permission before you go and disclose certain things. That is what it entails. And we pray we all go by that. It will help us a lot, a lot more. But of course, you shouldn't even, you shouldn't use that to deny the organization of knowing what is expected of them, even when they need to know that those information must be passed to the public. You must perform your own role as a female SS of your valuer. Conclusively, all SS of yours and valuers shall treat one another with respect, fairness, consideration, and integrity, and, and dignity, even integrity, and shall not allow any ill feelings to influence their values, conduct, and the menu towards, the, towards one another. At the same time, they should be treated on the basis of equality of status without any gender inequality, provided that they shall at all times defer to their professional colleagues. I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity, and I pray we are all be well guided as we move on in our discharge of duty. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, man. Thank you, ESV Bironke Ogun, for that straightforward lecture. She has introduced the topic for today and has also told us what to expect as I said, surveyors and valuers that want to work in the public sector, the hierarchy and your um, levels. She has also reminded us of what the fundamental principles are that are expected of us, no matter where we work. Thank you very much, ma'am. We are grateful. Please write Thank down you. your questions because the questions will be taken at the end of the TED speaker's um, presentation. So write down your questions you can put them on the chat box so that it will be taken at that time. We'll move on as we introduce the second speaker in the person of um, ESV Joy is a bureau. Her citation will be read now by, we'll read her citation by ESV Uche Ikoro. Uche Ikoro, please, we expect you to unmute and take the citation of our second speaker. You're welcome to the platform. Thank you, Ma. Thank you very much, Ma. You're Good welcome. Good morning, Nobu Collins. Good morning, National President. Good morning, the National uh, First Vice President and Second Vice President, uh, our potent chairman, and all noble colleagues online. I welcome you once again. The next presenter is a woman who broke, uh, my name is ESS e of Anvalua Uche Ikoro from Abia State Branch. The next presenter is a woman who broke a lot of genesis on her career path. She was the first female graduate of estate management from the then Imo State University, now Abia State University, Uturu. She was the first female land officer employed in Abia State Civil Service. Furthermore, she broke another genes by heading the lands department of Ministry of Lands, Survey and Urban Planning, Omaha, Abia State, as the first woman state director of land, as all her predecessors have been male. She is a registered estate surveyor and valuer and has just completed her term as a member of the Estate Surveyor and Valuers Registration Board of Nigeria. This woman is a lover of the profession 
and she has exhibited it in several ways by encouraging young estate surveyors and valuers, both in the public and in the private sector. And today, we the women are proud to have her not just as our head of department, she's also a mother of four and many grandchildren. And she's also a mentor to all of us here in Abia State. Noble colleagues, today I give you Estate Surveyor and Valua Joy Ihoma Ezebiro for her presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ESB Uche Koro. May I have the honor to invite our second speaker, ESB Joy Ezebiro, to take the floor. Ma, you have the floor. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Let me start by appreciating my national president. My national president, uh, CSB Ima. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. It's like you have a second device there in, uh, uh, around you. That's why it's echoing. There's something echoing there. So maybe you should um, um, mute one of them. Please go ahead. And you have 20 minutes, please. I'm sorry for that mix up. Sorry, Ma, what did you say? I said, I'm, I'm sorry for that mix up. I want to start okay. now. Okay. No, yes, no problem. I want to Go ahead. Start by appreciating. Uh, national president, the first and uh, second uh, vice presidents. And let me stand on the existing, uh, already established protocols since we don't really have time. Yes, I, in order to, to handle this topic, the female essays of and value in the public sector, I have. Um, <laughs> I have divided the topic into the following subheads. First of all, I want to handle who is a female estate survey and valuer. That is by way of uh, definition. I will also say what is uh, the public sector. And then what part of the public sector do you find this female estate survey and valuer? Then I'll go on to tell us the roles she plays, the female estate survey and valuer. What role or roles does she play in the public sector? And then I will also talk about her challenges and um, constraints that she meets on her, in her daily activities. Then finally, I will make my recommendations. So without further uh, waste of time, I want to say who a female estate surveyor and valuer is. We all know who we are. She's that lady, that woman that's professionally trained to practice the profession of estate valuation, uh, surveying and valuation. It's, um, Assume that she must have obtained a BSc or HND in estate management from any accredited university or polytechnic. In addition, she must be elected by the institution naives and subsequently be registered by the regulatory body as Babon. And then what? do we mean or what we understand by the public sector? Public means government. It therefore follows that the public sector represents all levels of government and their controlled and funded agencies. 
that deliver public programs, goods, and services. So that is uh, what we mean by the public sector. And that will even include the academia. Those are still, that is still a part of the public sector. But for the purpose of this lecture, I'm not going to be talking about them since we, they lectured us last month on a, um, female estate educators. So what particular establishments do you find the female estate surveyor and valuer? Like her male counterpart, you know, we're just saying female estate surveyors and valuers. There's no difference. It's just that this is a, a female forum and we want to talk about us. But what I'm saying also goes for our male counterparts. So you find the estate surveyor and valuer, which includes the female ones in such establishments, depending on whether you're in the federal or, or the state or the local government. You can find them in places like the ministries of lands, housing, environment, works, survey and urban planning, depending on how you know, it's been um, structured in the state or at the federal level. You find them at the federal level in places like uh, the, the Capital Development Authority. You find them in state development agencies, works department of local government councils, federal housing authorities, state housing corporations, land deeds registry, the academia, like I said before, and so on. That is where the estate surveyor and valuer is mainly employed. Then I want to go straight to her role, the role she plays where in that establishment where she is found. Her role, which is not different from that of the male, like I said, depends on where she's employed, either as a land officer, she could be employed as an estate officer, as a valuation officer, she could be employed as a property manager, she could be employed as a deeds registrar, she could be employed as a head of works, and so on and so forth, depending on where she finds herself, The important thing is that there's a, a, a guide to what she does, and it must be in conformity with the established uh, relevant uh, laws, like the Land Use Act, the um, Public Land Acquisition Act, and then the Public Service Scheme. That will guide her into doing her I believe her network is bad. Let's just give her some time so that she can continue. The estate survey and valuer okay. is the one. Hello, am I on? We can hear you now, ma. ma. We can hear you. Okay. Yes, ma. Uh, she does the valuation for probate. Um, if somebody wants to get letters of administration, normally her property or his property will be valued in order to know the worth, the capital value of that property. And based on that, the tax will be collected. And then she also um, heads the valuation compensation. She does it, mortgage valuation, rental valuation, and all such uh, valuations that you find, machinery, plant and machinery, all the valuations that you need in the public sector, in a auctioneer, auctioneering and so on and so forth. She also plays a very vital role on arbitration, on land matters. 
especially as regarding interest. The female estate survey and value are in the public service will always want to, with the wealth of experience she has, she will want to arbitrate, especially where you have land disputes or other um, disputes arising from interest in landed property. She will know with her training in land law and all the other uh, disciplines, she'll be able to know how to advise all the parties that are, you know, have issues concerning maybe their, their interests or those of the family before going to court. So she does that, takes very uh, active role in property management and maintenance, maintenance of public buildings, um, management roles in uh, her office and any other office, especially as regarding, you know, interest in land, and then um, land acquisition, particularly her role in land acquisition is um, very, very notable. She takes part in site selection, takes part in advocacy with the indigenous land owners to ensure that um, the, the acquisition is done without any, any serious um, uh, agitations. She prepares the revocation notices for governor's execution and ensures that the proper people are served after the um, service of the revocation notices. She also prepares the affidavit of services to prepare herself in case there's any matter that will go to court. Then majorly the function or the responsibility of enumeration of the unexhausted improvements in such lands and their valuation, that's a role, that's the role of the SSO and valuer. And then in evaluation of housing needs, she's there. She's there participating in urban renewal alongside the other professionals in the built up industry. She plays a, veg, a very major role. And then she also participates in the formulation and imp implementation of land policies wherever she finds herself, particularly in the state. The lands officer, the director of lands, the SS survey and value in the public service is very, very, plays very major role in the formulation of uh, land policies, especially during the time of uh, budgeting. We have a lot of contribution to make as to the capital and expenditure and so on and, and so forth. Then the estate uh, survey and value in, in, the, in, in public service, now we are talking about the female, is also uh, there to do feasibility and viability appraisal of our housing units and house, our layouts. She's there to do it and also does the work of an expert witness in matters, either in court or during the uh, arbitration, as um, somebody that is uh, pre, you know, trained, she could go you know, to represent the, the ministry or the establishment where she's working as an expert witness um, to, to help the court in determining you know, where to go from wherever they are. So what are her challenges or constraints in discharging her duties as a public uh, servant? The female estate survey and value and public uh, service encounters such challenges as gender discrimination. And this is coming from the employers, her colleagues, the male colleagues sometimes, sorry to say that sometimes, they want to see you as an inferior person. They want to see you as somebody who is weak. Yes, they are physically stronger than us sometimes, but whatever we lose in our physical attributes, we gain with our natural intelligence, God-given ability to manage things as mothers, as wives, as uh, grandmothers. And um, we have that discrimination 
it's, it has been there. It's not just peculiar with uh, the estate survey and valuer, female estate survey is there for most women. But thank God, we are seeing the light at the end of, ton of the tunnel. Then we also have uh, family responsibilities that will always uh, play a hard one on us. I remember in those days when I was having children, I, sometimes I'll carry my baby, get to the office, lie her on one side, go for inspection. Thank God for the kind of buses I had then. They will be taking care of my baby while I'm out there uh, inspecting properties. So that's a challenge. Um, to take care of the home front concerning your husband, your children, your grandchildren, time of pregnancy. Thank God our, our dynamic uh, president addressed that issue. It was like it was in my mind. He said something, you know, there's a, a lecture, a seminar he attended that talked, you know, hammered on that. And they're trying to profess solution to make sure that these young uh, female estate surveyors and valuers overcome this challenge because your family first before your, your profession. And when you're able to carry both, you know, simultaneously, you will have a good home, you will progress in your career. Then, you know, the issues that come with uh, pregnancies, those are some of the challenges. And then we have this cultural background uh, barrier. As a female estate surveyor and valuer, as a director of lands, if I'm, a, if I'm going to host a meeting, the men sometimes will not want to, the, you know, males from the, 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 the villages, you know, most times they are coming for land, their land matters, advocacy or whatever. They don't want the female to talk. They will prefer your subordinate who is a man. They say women don't have any, ah, it's a taboo for a woman to talk about land. You, a woman will not present polar, not, they, you know? So that is uh, how it is. We are not saying that that one should change, but that sometimes militates against uh, our function as um, the, the person that is supposed to carry out that uh, function. So we also have some religious beliefs. There are some areas they wouldn't like a woman to enter into. You go for inspection. They say no. Meanwhile, the male that is there may not be, you know, um, trained, may not be capable of handling that. So that is a, a challenge we have. Then we have the national challenges, you know, and uh, like I said, um, the, the 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 in the in the in the scheme of things in the you know national uh, in, in, in the in the national aspect sometimes there are people that will prefer to deal with even among the elites they prefer to deal with our male counterparts they want they feel that we are not physically able to carry that along but like i said time is changing all that then another major challenge we have, which it is very important that we look into today, is the conflicts we have with our other professionals in discharging our duties. We have cases where engineers, like it's been a national matter in the institution, um, talking about um, uh, other people trying to hijack our responsibilities, like the engineers, the quantity surveyors, the lawyers, you know, even like in Abia State now, probate valuation, they don't want the estate survey evaluator to do it. They use a, anybody they want. Oh, your property is worth this. In Abia State, again, we have very major challenges. Values of properties have been, you know, placed according to their locations. And that is what guides the state in collection of capital gains tax uh, during registration of titles, title documents. And these um, values that have been ascribed to these properties according to their locations are done without recourse to the estate of a valuer who is trained to do so. 
So that is a very major challenge. Mabdi, we have five more minutes. Okay, I'm almost around. We can't hear you. Uh, Derecka, she's there as the overall director of lands in Bielsa State and some other states. We have uh, Professor Mrs. Kakulu. We have uh, people like uh, my friend Mrs. Uh, Egwa. Sorry, I think the network is very bad. If we are not taking. If you look at the people and you know carry on this uh, the forum, then we have. Um, I have also recommended that we sensitize other women who are not um, practicing the profession as as they should be, and then we should also endeavor to to attend seminars and trainings, and then finally, I want us to use our position as female estate surveyors and valuers in the public service to impact, that is not in my paper, to impact those that are in the private sector as well as our institution. Since we are there in the policy making and then all, all that, we have the opportunity to use our position to influence some of the um, contracts and some other things that will benefit those that are in the public sector and the institution. My fellow women, I am a firm believer in the endless possibilities of our noble profession, which will in turn impact us women positively. Women can do anything in this profession, giving our motherly, grandmotherly, sisterly, auntily, you know, dispensation to everything. I want to thank you for your time and patience. God bless you. Thank you, ma'am. Wow. Thank, thank you very, you very much. much. Thank you very much you. for your very detailed and educative lecture. You've told us about um, what to expect, our roles in public service, which is enormous and very challenging. You also chipped in our God-given ability as women to manage challenges. So I don't think it's out of place. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. We'll come to that. And I um, also want to mention again that if we have questions, if we have questions, we should please put it down on the chat box and the questions will be taken when it is time for questions and answers. We'll now move on as we take the third lecture. And um, we are going to be calling on ESB Amina M. Z. Polo to take the citation for our third speaker. Is she on the bridge? Yes, yes ma'am. I'm online. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Please go ahead. Good morning, the and national welcome. president, the first vice president, the second vice president, all state coordinators, the national coordinator. I'll stand on the existing protocol because of time. I am here to present the citation for ESV Hajiya Mariam Abubakar Manga, RSV MBA. ESV Hajiya Mariam Abubakar Manga is an alumni of Kaduna Polytechnic, HND in estate management and valuation, and had a postgraduate diploma in management, PGMD in 2001, and master's degree in business administration, 2003, both in, from Usma Damfodio University, Sokoto. Yes, the Mariam Abakar Manga started her professional career with Sokoto State Government in Ministry of Land, Survey and Housing in 1986 as an assistant estate surveyor. She rose to head various sections of the department and other related issues, which are as follows. One, 
head of land record from 1986 to 1988 to head of CFO that is, that is in charge of processing of statutory of customary certificates of occupancy for governor's signature from 1989 to 1991. Head of land transactions, that means in charge of all land transactions, such as mortgage, assignment, sublease, etc. In 1992 to 1995, head of compulsory acquisition for evaluation, 1996 to 1998. Deeds, registrar, custodian of all land records within and outside Sokoto, making sure that all land that is approved by governor is being registered for and entity and security. She's, she's also in charge of going to courts and present land records when the need arises. Settling of land disputes when the need arises. Guide people from lawyers to conduct searches on land with the documents. That's from 1990 to 2009. While well, with Ministry of Land and Housing, Hadja Mariam was opportune to attend various seminars and workshops on land administration and property maintenance. She has built a reputation and a very good synergy with her colleagues, which has given her a name to reckon with. She has personal attrib attributes such as ability to focus ahead and plan, manages, organize, and control effectively. Excellent in interpersonal relationships and commercial skills, ability, control effectively. She has, she has faced with challenges and find solutions to such challenges. The attributes has made her an outstanding female essay surveyor and valuer with Sokoto, KB, Zamfara states respectively. Yes, the Mariam Abubakar Manga is a philanthropist, embodiment of great mind and have concern and pity for the life privilege which made her MD stroke CEO of Adolescent Girls Initiative, a non-governmental organization that is out to listen to out of school adolescent girls. Haji Amari Abakar Manga is a registered member of Nigeria Institute of Estate Surveyors and Valuers, Naive. Naive. Haji Abakar Manga is now a principal partner of Maria Manga and Associates. Consultant to Boasment Company on All Land Matters 2009 to date. I hereby present to you an experienced, an eloquent, an explicit, an entrepreneur, and a noble woman, yes, the Mary Abakar Manga, as the third lecturer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amina. Um, You're welcome. I have the privilege of calling to the platform ESV Miriam Abubakar Manga. I said, speaker, madam, you have the floor, please. Greetings to our dear president, ESV Emmanuel Luke, FNIBS. To the, our first and second vice president, Nigeria Institute of Estate Surveyors and Valuers, and to the organizers of this lecture led by interim chairman, ESB Bridget Orenye and her team. Permit me to observe all protocol, please. I start my lecture by introduction, but you have no, the PowerPoint, please. Yeah. The female estate surveyor and valuer is that woman that has been elected by the Nigerian Institute of Estate Surveyors and Valuers, Naives, as a member and is fully registered by s and empowered to practice the estate surveying and valuation in Nigeria. The board issues her a registered number, an official stamp, and a seal, which she carries her registration number, which carries her registration number, and which she uses to ascend to all valuation. Here, I'm referring to while she is in office, the valuation she will do for the public service. While I'm now defining public sector. While public sector is that part of the economy that composes of all levels of government and control enterprises. For instance, we are talking about federal government, state government, and local government. And they exist to provide services for their own people. I'm now giving you an example of the government I'm referring to. 
She can be posted in the military, law, law enforcement agencies, infrastructure, public transport, public education, healthcare, because all these properties, they live on land and they have building on them. As far as there is bleeding and land in that property, the public estate surveyor and valuer can be posted to that place. Okay. What we are saying, and I, hope I will I continue ahead to say, all this can be categorized under departmental. That is those things I have mentioned, I mean, they can be categorized under departmental undertakings, statutory corporations and government agencies, the female estate surveyor and valuer's role in public sector services cut across the various discipline areas, such as agency, management, acquisitions for valuation, compensation, issuance of resettlement certificate, feasibility studies, feasibility and viability appraisal, supervision of development project, and general construction work. In all, the survival and continuity in practice depends on instruction given to her or brief instruction as often as possible from her immediate boss, which can be oral or written. While I say this, as a public servant, you are working under somebody. You have to be given instruction. You have to give in rules and regulation to work upon. Therefore, the kind of performance or the kind of work you undertake depends on the, 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 the instruction is that is being given to her. But however, irrespective of whether you are a, a male estate surveyor and valuer or a female estate surveyor and valuer, the roles are property management, acquisition and valuation of asset, feasibility and viability studies, land use planning and management, public land administration, project management, property deal counseling, arranging finance for investment, arbitration. While well, now your role as a female estate and um, surveyor and valuer in public service depends on where you find yourself. Because I was, I'm used to Ministry of Land and Housing, I'm now defining the role of estate surveyor and valuer in Ministry of Land, Survey and Housing, which her role includes making land policies for land use, which has to be in conformity with the Land Use Act of 1978. Here I'm saying, as an estate surveyor and valuer, you are in charge of making rule, um, um, land use policies of your state. That, and, that, and that land use policies you will use in the state has to be in conformity with the existing national land use policy. General land administrator, as it affects the state, you are now the land administrator of your state. Supervision and direction of interest and landed property in order to secure maximum return. As a professional estate surveyor and valuer in the state, you are in charge of making direction, giving direction and making supervision of landed property. The return now here, since you are working in the public sector, may not be a monetary return, but satisfaction of public in, in services. Then she is a land use land policies for various land uses. That is, she has to make contribute in, in synergy in network with other relevant agencies, such as town planning survey to make land use policies as regard to land use in within that state. That is, you zone your land uses to residential, commercial, industrial, agricultural, etc, etc. When then when it comes to issues of land, land, land um, acquisition and valuation, that SS surveyor and valuer is in charge of selection of site. Pay. After selection of site, you issue notice. After notice, you pay advocacy visit to enlighten the community and their heads on the, the project the government is about to, to, to take in. And that is what bring in land use, uh, land acquisition. After acquiring the land, what do you do? You ensure that an adequate compensation is paid to the, to the, to the, to the community. After issue them, we here, after issue them, I'm paying them an adequate compensation. We give, issue them resettlement certificate. Why do we issue them resettlement certificate? We issue them resettlement certificate to give them an identity. Land use, land acquisition and valuation is all about bettering the life of community. 
you improve their life from what you, 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 you saw them, you improve them, you give them an identity, you give them security, and you power, empower them economically. Why? Because of that certificate of occupancy that you have given them. Don't forget that the land they were owning before is a customary land. It doesn't have title. But now you have given them a certificate of occupancy, which gives them an interest in land for 99 years. And by giving them that certificate of occupancy, you have given them an identity, you have given them a security over their land, and you have empowered them because they can use that certificate of occupancy to secure loan. Then I said maintenance of public infrastructural assets, e.g. land, building, plants, machinery, fixtures in the building and features. This is where their role is needed most. Not only in Ministry of Land and Housing, we are also being posted to other institutions like Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health, Court. Why are we posted there? Because they are surviving, they are, they are using land acquisition. They, they need land, they acquire land, and they have buildings. As an estate surveyor and valuer, when you are posted to this organization, you collaborate with lands and housing to secure good land for them, to maintain their property, and direct on the maintenance, that rather than giving the, 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 the structures to the dilapidate, you advise on maintenance. They as custodian of all land records, and that is to say all land record, all, all land transactions are kept separately. As an estate surveyor and valuer, you are a custodian of all land records, particularly those that has approved by His Excellency, the Executive Governor, wherever you find yourself. You keep them safe. Why do you need to keep them safe? In case of dispute, you have to refer to those lands, bring them out and settle dispute for them. Then she acts as an arbitrator. That is where there is land dispute. You need to, uh, whenever there is dispute, for instance, was, when I was in office, there is no day that we don't settle this food. You find that land, that's only one genuine document. You, but you meet people, about three or five people with fake documents. So if we have to refer back to the records, bring out that record and settle the, this food amicably. You show the person, you have to be tactical here because if you give them the wrong approach, they can beat you instantly. You have to be tactical in presenting your record. Look, Mr. A, you are the right owner of certificate of occupancy number so so so. It was registered at number number so 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 page so 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 volume so 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 so. Mr. C, we are sorry, your land doesn't is not registered with us. Therefore, you don't have record over it. That is what I mean by going there. Then, as an arbitrator, also you normally take records. Because some people will just mortgages, for instance, they would eat, they will take loan from banks and deny it. Thereafter, it, you, you have to be referred to Ministry of Land and Housing. We take records to the court. You will be put in the witness box. You take an oath. Therefore, you have to present those records as they are being kept in that agenda. Act as a professional consultant. That is to say, as far as land issues are concerned, within her jurisdiction, she can be contacted at any point in time. That is, as a registered SS of your and valuer, while you are working in land and housing, you should be able to consult people. You should be able to talk to people. You should be able to understand people. You should be able to convince people on land matters or anything on real estate. You should be able to say so without any hesitation. Act as an educator and instructor. What I mean here as a, uh, as a registered surveyor and valuer who has been registered, you should be able, believe me, our local government, they don't even know, some of them, they don't even know the existence of Land Use Act. So here you have to chip in. You have to set training upon training to our local governments, to our local community. You make them understand. Why do, the national land use, land use policy and the state government, the project the state government are about to take. While in doing this work, she is faced with formally challenges. And some of this, in the course of performing the above rules, the female estate surveyor and valuer faced with the following challenges. 
Now the, I'm, I'm referring to a research that has been connect, conducted in 2013, which stated that in terms of employment, there are some certain criteria laid down, such as experience, communication skill, good relationship, marketing planning, personal history of the person you are going to employ, knowledge presentation and dedication. But then you find out when it comes to employment, I'm giving you this because I had the experience. I was opportune to interview six estate surveyors and valuers. I mean, three estate surveyors and valuers and three land officers. Despite the fact that these three female estate surveyors and valuers knew what they were doing, I asked them a simple question. What is land? The three female essays on rail and values were able to answer me conveniently, but the three BSC geographers were not able to define what is land. But to my greatest surprise, those three female essays on rails and values were dropped, and the three land officers with BSC geography were employed. Then it is observed that there is gender bias in the selection of essays surveyors and valuer. Preference is given to men. This is applied to my, to my also the second listing. When it comes to employment, irrespective of what while they were performed or not, a female estate surveyor and valuer is normally dropped. And the male counterpart is given the opportunity. We've been seeing it and we know what they are doing in the office. Please, the next slide. The next slide, please. While some organizations are of, of the opinion that female estate surveyor and valuer are incapable of handling briefs effectively, and also having the impression that female estate surveyors and valuer are incapable or associated with female problem that is often rendered as non-performing. Yes, some organization, like I said, they believe that once you are a lady, you cannot take instructions correctly. You cannot perform. This is not true. At least you have to give somebody before you, come, you, come, you give you somebody an instruction. If you fail, that is when you should be able to, uh, not just the mere fact that you are a woman, therefore you should become them. Then religious, religious and cultural oh. barriers. Yeah. Hello? 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 Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Religious and cultural barriers especially from this part of the country where I come from. Religion is being mis is misused. There is no religion that stops you as a female to go out and walk. What the religion said is dress up. You should dress decent racing. But then the religion is being misunderstood. Even the culture is being misunderstood. I could remember 2013 was when I was community gather. They, they, didn't even, they didn't even care to find out whether I'm a Muslim or a Christian or whether I'm from the part of the North or not. They just gathered and said, no, Arnia cannot go into the, their, their community. I have to come back where hijab, go back. In fact, it resulted, to, the first day was preaching. I had to ask them they should cut where it is being said in the Quran that a female estate of surveyor and valuer, I'm talking about gender now, cannot come out and work for them. The lack of adequate networking system. You find out if you are a woman working with your co male there can be estate surveyors and valuers or any profession. Believe me, that information is not there for you. They can just decide in a morning to tell you, oh yeah, we have so, so, so work at this. Can you meet us in so, so, so place? Whereas it is not being done like that. There has to be that synergy. There has to be working understanding. We have to network with each other. For instance, as an SC surveyor and valuer, you have to network with town planning. You have to network with survey in order for you to carry out your work successfully. If you just get up in the morning and ask me, oh yeah, give it me in so, so, so place, then what will I do for you? 
there is very, networking is very essential when it comes to our profession. Limited time to spend with our family. As a, as a you have professional, minutes, mom. okay, as a professional, you have limited time. Honestly, if you really want to do your work perfectly and in good order, you have limited time to spend with your family. Gender discrimination and rights from ongoing to school to, to acquire knowledge. Here I'm talking about after secondary school. From the experience I have with this part of the country where I come from, if you are given a vocational admission or you are admitted to read anything vocational, I will me, our parents are not happy about it, except if they hear medicine, uh, pharmacy, and this thing. It took me a long time and a day to convince my parents that yes, this is what I want. I'm going for asset management. I'm going for land economy because I was in ABU Zaria. But I left, I said, I want to read land economy. I left to Kaduna Polytechnic. Inadequate information, just as I shared earlier, we are not given that privilege to have adequate information. In fact, to know what is going on within your own system, Ministry of Land and Housing, to know what is going on. You don't have that information. In fact, some of the times, if they, if they see you coming, they hide, they stop talking. They stop talking, not knowing that you are part of the ministry, you are part of the working system. Inability to, to attend to the domestic school, that is time for your children. Like I said earlier, if you really want to do your work, you have limited time to spend with your children. Then personal characteristics of the female assess surveyor and follower. How do you present to the, yourself to the public? How do you present yourself to the office? How do you dress? How do you present yourself to the com community when you are giving a tax to do? How do you present yourself? All these things count. Then recommendation. I said the female essay surveyor and valuer should be bold enough to take her responsibility at any point in time. Yes, I mean this. You as a surveyor, look at yourself. Are you ready to do that work? Once you are ready to do that work, no matter the challenges, no matter who is standing there, say yes to your work. And this is what you want to do. And you should be giving your role to perform. Then public enlightenment so that the role of essay surveying and valuation will be known to people. Honestly speaking, the part where I am coming from, the role of estate surveying and evaluation is not known. All they know is architecture, engineer, and this thing. Even our government representatives, they don't know our role. So how do we chip in? How do we make, how do we create that, that, that public enlightenment for people to know our role, for people to know us? For instance, I was surprised about two months ago, I have to call our senior colleagues to, to tell them what is happening in Sokoto State. Quacks gathered themselves that there are estate surveyors and valuers operating in the state. In the state. While we, the registered estate surveyors and valuers, are there, we are not being patronized. They are the ones that take up valuation issues and people accept them because that is what they, they know. Our role should be known to the community where we talk. Then I say naive and ex-performance should be engaged more female into practice. Alhamdulillah, this has come up. We are, we are happy with the women wing that is being established and I believe more women will come in. Then female assessor surveyor and valuer should indulge in going for seminars, workshops and conferences. Here I'm talking to my professional colleague from this side of the country. We should be able to attend each seminars, workshops that are organized national conference because it takes me a lot of time to convince my colleague uh, my fellow essay surveyors and valuers to go for national conference, to attend to seminars, to enter to workshops. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I'm grateful to you all. Thank you very much, man. Thank oh. you. We are so grateful. Thank you wow. so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. In detail, Thank what you. the public sector Thank you, is about. Thank you have given us details of your experiences in the Ministry of Lands and Housing. And this will help to encourage others that there is no challenge that cannot be surmounted. We are very grateful. On thank behalf you. of the NICE Women's Wing, I want to say a very big thank you to our three distinguished speakers for the way they have handled this topic very brilliantly. 
very insightful, very impactful, and very apt even for this time. We appreciate you all. Noble colleagues, it's obvious that our colleagues in the public sector are better all around us than we in the private sector. If I was a much younger surveyor, I would go and look for a public sector to work in because <laughs> it's like that. Yes, I'm, I'm being very truthful because they, 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 they are given the opportunity to cover every aspect of the profession. As a private person, you can decide to just focus on one aspect. But here, you don't have a choice. You work in anywhere you find yourself in the public sector. And that knowledge, you cannot take it away from them. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished speakers. And um, I think our um, president, the first vice and the second vice, they still have a lot of things to do. The gender inequality, you heard that saying they didn't take the three ladies, female estate surveyors, just because they are ladies. And the enlightenment program, especially for those in that area. Could you please mute yourself if we are not speaking? Is that is interfering with our program, please? Hello? Hello? So we will continue. It's time for questions and answers. Like I had said, you should put your questions in the chat box and we'll take it from there. We are going to be handling the questions and answers. So whatever questions you have, Please put them in the chat box. I can see some questions in our chat box. One of them says, my question is how can female estate surveyor and valuer in the public sector overcome the challenge of harassment in the workplace? This is from one of our colleagues, Florence Otegbade. How can female estate surveyor in the public sector overcome the challenge of harassment in the workplace. Can our second speaker handle that, please? Can I call on um, ESV Joy, is a hero to handle that for us, please? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? If she's not available, I think I can take that. No, please go ahead. Oh. Yes, the, thank you very much. The, let me let me talk about uh, okay, that, she's that there. Aspect. Yes, it's it's that is usually the case with all female professionals. But the person that has a problem is that female professional that does not know her onions. If you know what you're doing, if you're conscientious. If you know the profession and you know what you're supposed to do and when to do it, you will overcome that. Some females, I want to state here that some women want to give you the impression that um, I have done all that it takes and yet the harassment is coming. It will always, that harassment will always succeed if you are not conscientious, hardworking, smart, and you know you, what you're supposed to do. If you know, like when I was to take over as the, the state director of lands, I had some challenges, but some people were there to speak for me because they knew I would be able to deliver. So those males that were around, even in government circles, that knew what I will be able to do, we are there to also speak for me. So be prayerful, be, don't, don't sell your birthright for a mess of porridge. If they know who you are, they will not harass you. People they harass and succeed are people that are depending on them for promotion, depending on them for, for, for them to you know, um, handle their, their functions. But once you know what you're supposed to do and when to do it and how to do it, you, you, your, 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 you know, your works will speak for you. Your goodwill will speak for you. Your hard work will speak for you. Thank you. I think, I think that is my answer to that, yes. 
Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. We'll take the second question, and this goes to the first speaker. How can a female graduate be accepted to work with the public sector without knowing any connection? Because now a graduate that has served in a particular public sector, it's difficult for a copper to get and be retained. Well, I think her question is, how can you get to work without being connected to anybody there just by merit? Our first speaker, Ma, please, can you okay, take that? Thank you very much. Well, uh... Of course, we all know that uh, civil service is a, is a protocol and a systematic organization. They have the rules and regulation of employment. And they, they also have the number they would need to, to employ at a particular time. Well, this that? notwithstanding, uh, many organizations once a copper served there and you have proven that you are a good person, you are intelligent. I, I, I know of a lot of coppers that have been retained in my own organization, for instance, because we discovered they are very, very good. Uh, well, as, you, as a copper, once you enter and your focus is to, to work and then face what you are there for, a lot of people will be watching you. And as soon as you finish, in fact, sometimes we recommend the, 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 the leaders of that team or the director who recommend, and that will be, will be acceptable to others because you have proven yourself as a copper. But you cannot be a copper that just come into service and then you, you just while away your time, you are nowhere to be found, you are not all in the office, or because you feel, is it not just a public... Uh, office and they don't do anything not knowing that a lot of people are watching you sometimes you don't need connection to to be in government those you know nigeria we know all these things could happen but your personal person will prove that you 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 can work there they can employ you so it all depends on who you have not 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 all the time who you know it all depends on you have proven yourself over and above every other person that comes in through knowing people and I'm not saying that does not happen, but I'm saying one in a million or one in some thousands, you, if you have proven yourself, you can come in on that merit. So, and it do happen. We recently employed somebody in my own organization because of the fact that she was very, very good. And incidentally, she's a female. Everybody was saying, we shouldn't allow this lady to go because she, she proved herself to be a very good person. And right there now, she's with, working with us. And that could happen to anybody. She did not know anyone. It's just based on merit and recommendation. And I want to tell the person that posted this in Kenya that if you are such a person, you must prove yourself as one person. You, my own lecture was based on the foundation to be, to be an essence of your in a public setting. Foundation, if your foundation is bad, every other part of your body is bad. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My Angela, I, I believe she has said it all. You don't need any connection to get into that place, but your performance, your punctuality to work, your dedication to duty will earn you that employment. Thank you. We have a third question, which I think has already been answered. It's the same as the first. The person says, how can the female estate surveyor in public sector? overcome intimidation and bullying from fellow male surveyors. It's the same thing that was answered by our second speaker. Or do you want to throw more light on? Is there any other dimension to look at this question? I'm directing it to the speaker. Uh, OK, well, let me just chip in this on that. Where bullying oh, yeah, and uh, intimidation. Well, it all depends on you personally, too. What I've said earlier, if you are, you, you, you are you, you have come to the service to display yourself. And uh, you see, as a noble person, I used to tell me personally, they look at me as an official person because that is me. I used to tell a person the way you dress is the way you be addressed. If you are coming in to work, you must dress properly. There's a code of formal dressing and you must adhere to it. If you, if you prove yourself, you, are, you have come in and you don't, 
come in, in, in like you are showing yourself. You have come in to do your work. No male counterpart. In fact, sometimes we female are, are far more better. I'm, I'm sorry, my president, you are, you are there. But then you, you find us very, very humble and good and noble. But if otherwise you come in and the, the next thing is for you to, to tell them that you are available, they will do that to you. But if you have come in as a professional person and you are thorough, they will respect you and treat you the same way. So intimidation and bullying, it all depends on you. No man will intimidate you or bully you if you have put yourself in that position of respect from the beginning, from the day you enter. And if you don't, if you make yourself available and you move from offices to offices where you are, you are doing your work or you try to dress in a way that people will see you as I'm available, then they will do that to you. So that is my own answer to that uh, question. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. I will add, have um, I will, hello, ma'am. Okay, I will add to, add to the issue of bullying and teasing. If you know what you are, you know, that is why I say personal characteristics of the essence of your and Balwa has self matters. If you know what you are doing, you know your job, they will fear you. Because I know when I was in office, if they ask them to go to my office, they will say, Kai, that I don't want to go to her office. She will bring rules and regulation for me. So you as a female estate surveyor and value, you should know yourself, know your work very well before you even step in. If once you know your work, you will be respected. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. We have yet another question and I want you to take it, the third speaker. The question okay. says, how do female estate surveyors and value become recognized in terms of her professional qualification? Thank you very much. How you will be recognized is when you know what you are doing, your ability to perform, your ability to be straightforward, your ability to be transparent in whatever you are doing, your ability to know your job very well. For instance, I don't work in Zafara State. I don't work in KB State. But my fa the, the, I don't work, I, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm being respected by lawyers within this, this three states. Anything that concerns document, they will say, ah, if Haji Amariam did not say this document is genuine, I will not buy it. So know yourself, know what you are doing, perform very well. Don't fear anybody. Don't fear anybody. We are all human beings, but you should respect and be transparent in whatever you are doing and be honest enough, be bold enough to say yes or no. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have um, another question here, and I would like the first speaker to handle it. How can the female estate surveyor in public service assist the young surveyors under their tutelage? How can the female estate surveyor in public service assist the young surveyors under their tutelage? All right, thank you very much. How can the female, the senior ones assist the younger ones? Exactly. So definitely, definitely. Well, if you go back to my lecture, I highlighted I, I some of the quality of who you can be as an estate, a female estate of your valuer. Of course, if you're a leader, from the moment you start attaining the leadership role in your organization, you must be a kind of boss or a leader that carries your, your junior ones along you must be able to train them. When you are trained, you train them, train the trainer. So you can, those younger ones will see you as a leader because of the qualities you have, and they will believe that they should emulate you. So the younger ones should also be submissive. They should submit themselves to such leader that they find that is of high quality. In my own uh, organization, I'm, I'm an essence of your Kume teacher. So most times when we have meetings, I do go and uh, I say, I have learned this and I'm going to present it to you to learn. And I, I put across some topics for us to discuss. So those are the ways you will learn. But you know, some of, the, some of the younger ones that they want to run faster than their legs. Some of them, they will even want to overtake you. They do so many things because of money. But if you submit yourself to your boss and you learn 
from him. I'm talking about the, the, the kind of boss that have such quality that I've listed in my lecture. Then such person can train others. And you that you need that training should also be ready to, to receive such training. And then it will, it will pay you off. And a lot of seminars, a lot of MCPD are there for you to go. Uh, I'm, like I said, like a teacher I am, by born teacher, because that is me, I will also say you have to go to your branch meetings. There are lots more to learn there. And when they have conferences at the national level, you make yourself available. If your organization is not sponsoring you, keep some money out of what you earn and sponsor yourself. There you will learn a lot. If you all know that there are any state is having a topic that you don't know any, any you are not so sound in it, make yourself available to such seminar and MCPD. Go and learn. It is when you learn that you get more, uh, more you get improved in whatever you want to discharge, even to your subordinates or to the public. And that is what I think should happen. You assist them by giving them, by laying good examples, and they should also be ready, they will be submissive to get that knowledge from you as a leader. I, I hope I've done justice to that. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. I hope the person that asked the question listened and listened very well. We have another question here, and I would like the second speaker to handle it. How can a female professional be encouraged and mentored, especially in the built environment? How can a female professional be encouraged and mentored, especially in the built environment? Yes, Second speaker, ma'am. Yes. The way to go about it is uh, to, to establish a relationship, make yourself available. Make yourself available to these young ones. Tell them your own story and encourage them. Tell them they can do it. There are people who have not done so well in the classroom. When it comes to practice, they do very well. Some people are just scared. They don't, you know, because they have not, you know, done excellently well in the classroom, they think they can. So make yourself available. There are people in the offices, maybe people believe they cannot perform. They don't mean it files to them. They don't challenge them. They don't give them assignments because you think they can't do it. Give them assignments. You know, edit what they have done. Encourage them. Bring them closer to yourself. Tell them your own experience. If somebody like me can make it, then you can make it. There's, there's, there's counseling is, is very important. Some people have low self-esteem. When you bring them closer to yourself and then become the mother, become the senior sister that is there for them, you, you will see they will pick up the courage to move with others. And um, definitely the sky will be their, their limit. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. We have just an observation here. And um, I think the president, the first vice and the second vice should please take note. And this is from ESV Amina Kolo. She simply says, in reference to what both president and uh, ESV Bironke said, I wish to suggest that certain posts or posts be reserved for the women surveyors in both states and national school. This is born out of the fact that numbers of female to male surveyors counterpart is undeniably few. If all posts are freely open to the general contest, the chance for the female surveyors to clinch some posts is slim. Well, my sister, this is a decision for the National Council to make. They've heard your, they've listened to your observation and um, they will take a decision on that. I want to say once again, thank you very much. That is all the question we have for now. Thank you very much. We are very excited to have everybody participate in this um, one day lecture. Do you have a question, sir? 
Uh, it, 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 it doesn't have to be a question, so I just... Okay, make... sorry, sorry. Please go ahead. Uh, once again, let me acknowledge uh, my president, who is, I believe, still with us. And uh, I also saw the Esbabon Registrar. From the beginning, he's been with us. And I've also seen one or two fellows, male fellows, who have also been here to identify with the women. Someone like uh, Kunle Fashobon, I acknowledge you, sir. And others, I could not really get their names properly. Uh, honestly, I am highly impressed. What I, I'm just privileged to have been here today to listen to these three excellent presenters. They did very, very well. And I am just speechless hearing from the first, the second, and the last presenter. I want to, in fact, from your last comment, uh, God's willing, by his grace, with uh, due respect to my president, who is still our guy, I am sure that the next council will look deeply into that last comment concerning, uh, especially because I already had it in mind that uh, there are positions that are not constitutional, which we should at least allow our women to lead in the institution. That is the beginning of uh, coming up to come and challenge the military uh, position. I can assure you that uh, council will look into it even before this administration uh, ends its tenure in June next year, as the supervising officer, I will liaise with, liaise with your, uh, your leaders, uh, will discuss and uh, make some recommendations to the current council on this issue. I want to uh, just add that uh, majorly, not even to the may, uh, to the female folks, all of us in the public sector, those in the public sector, should please, we should look at how we can add value to where we work. I think in that way, the government will recognize us more and uh, rely on us. And as, at the same time, especially as it relates to policy formulation. And again, after this lecture, I would like to have a meeting with the ECHO and we will discuss further on a lot of things coming out from this presentation. Once again, I'm highly impressed. And I want to thank all of us. I saw so many uh, senior colleagues. Well, when I say senior colleagues, some of our lecturers are on this platform. Please permit me to acknowledge one of my very senior lecturers, Titilayo uh, Ukaba, Estes of Gambala, Mrs. Doctor. I think she's a dean now. I acknowledge you, Ma. Uh, and all others on this platform. Again, uh, thank you and God bless you all. And I hope to meet Bridget. So please take note. We'll have a way to have a meeting so that uh, we move yes, the institution forward. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you very thank much, you, sir. sir. Okay. Thank, thank you very thank much. You very much. <laughs> we are grateful and thank you for the recognitions you've made. My apologies to, especially our chairman of the board. I did not see you on the bridge on time. Thank you for coming to support and encourage us. 
Thank you to all the fellows that are on this bridge. Please, can I make you, a comment, uh, please? Like, okay, sorry. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Victor Alunga here, second vice president. You're welcome, um, sir. Thank you. I recognize and thank the president for uh, declaring this open. I've also been part of the program from the beginning. Um, I also thank the first vice for finding time to come. But I think as a matter of uh, um, rectification, the second vice president is the supervising officer uh, of the women wing. So I'm not sure that the first vice actually intends to, to hold a meeting with the ESCO because that is not his uh, uh, responsibility. Having said that, um, I must commend the, uh, the efforts of the organizers of this. And I'm particularly um, impressed with the quality of presentation. Uh, it shows that, um, you know, what a, a man can do, a woman can also do better. And, we, Thank you, you know, the truth of the matter is that we are all equal. We are all estate surveyors and valuers. Uh, we all went through the same qualification process. And to be honest with you, in uh, tertiary institutions, when we went there, there were women that actually outperformed men in classes and even in professional uh, training. So I do not actually, you know, accept the fact that women are disadvantaged. And I'm very, very impressed by um, the presentation, the, the presentation by um, uh, Aji Amanga, um, you know, opening our minds to uh, practices in the Northern part. And I think this will be very, very um, useful in, um, for council to, uh, to actually uh, address some of those challenges and uh, provide a, good, a, a better platform for, for our women colleagues to thrive um, in their profession you know, in any part of the country. Um, it, is, it is heartwarming. And I think uh, what is happening has shown us that there is wisdom in the formation of the women wing. And I want to say that um, uh, the present ESCO has done very well. And the support of the women wing, you know, to this initiative has also been very, very encouraging. So I'm impressed and I'm sure the president, you know, was also impressed when he made his uh, opening remarks. And um, I just want to assure you that um, we will be there to support you. And I will be expecting, um, you know, when we have programs like this, I want to suggest to the ESCO that um, there should be some, some form of community or a summary of what transpired and then some of the suggestions um, that, um, that actually uh, come up from deliberation so that this can be, uh, be presented and debated at uh, council for possible um, you know, action on them. And uh, I will actually be um, uh, looking forward to receiving this and to also um, you know, have discussion with your ESCO. Um, I want to thank you for this uh, opportunity that you have given to our female colleagues. Um, I think on the issue of reserving posts, um, I think we need to be, we need to be uh, cautious and we also need to understand that um, uh, we, are, we are actually um, registered under the um, under the rules of karma and uh, discrimination uh, is not something that uh, is accepted or um, you know by law and uh, what we can do is actually to continue to intensify 
because you look at other professional bodies, I'm not aware that in ICANN there is such um, reservation or in, in Korean. And these are organizations that have produced female presidents, female leaders, you know, and, um, uh, and, um, and uh, other professional bodies. So I want to, uh, I want to caution in that way that that may not be the best route to go, but there will be some opportunities in terms of um, uh, policies to deliberately encourage the women to participate, to take active participation and influence decisions in, uh, in the institution. So um, having said that, I want to thank you, congratulate the women food, and uh, look forward to receiving your community and uh, to also working with you uh, to advance the objectives and purpose of establishing this Women Wing. Thank you very much. God bless you and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much, our second vice ESV Victor E. Alonge, for your comments. We are grateful. I don't know if the board chairman is still on the bridge. If you want to make any comment, if he's there, so you have the floor. Uh, it's not the board chairman. It's the registrar of the board. I, I didn't see the board chairman. It's the registrar that I saw. Okay. The registrar, please. If he's still on the bridge. Okay. I think he's no longer there. We are coming to the end of um, this one day lecture and I'm very optimistic that all of us here have taken something beneficial away. We are going to be taking something beneficial away because our speakers really opened our eyes to a lot of things and we got to know many more things about the public sector. We are going to be taking the announcements now and um, I think the very important one is that in all of us as a group. So we are asked to join the Telegram. They have sent us messages to join the Telegram as the WhatsApp group is too small to contain. And I would like a pro tem chairperson to Take it up from here. She has further announcements to make. I don't think she's on the bridge. Her network, she's um, she's left the group, and that's from her network. Yes, the matter, Ali. Can you uh, stand in for her since she's not there? Hello, my moderator. Yeah, Hello? the I think the yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? No, what did you say? Could you repeat? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah, we have announcements. I've only announced about uh, we moving to Telegram because of the um, number of members because the WhatsApp column cannot contain everybody anymore. Okay. Uh, and she was supposed to take other announcements, but she's not here. Uh, the announcements are not with me right now. So I'm sure that the most important one is what you have taken. Other ones will be posted on our platforms, all our platforms, if she doesn't come on board. Okay. Yeah. And again, okay. since she's not here, I want to say to our supervising uh, uh, officer, the second vice, uh, that a communique for the first one is almost ready. It will be passed on to him and the communique for this one will be worked on and will be passed on to all the appropriate authorities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, she has joined us again. Okay, she can take it. She has joined us. Okay, I'm so sorry for 
the break in transmission. I want to appreciate the first and second vice. And um, from the first lecture series we had, we already have a communique we have um, done by a committee, but we had to send it to some of our senior colleagues to look at it before we send it to presidents and council. And I'm also assuring you that we have a committee that is also working to produce a communique for this second lecture. We will send both to presidents and council, sir. Well, so I also want to, um, I want to thank the chairman of board of Ezra Bond because he has been with us. I want to thank the registrar. He too joined us right from inception. And we also had some board members with us. I want to say a big thank you to all of them. And for all the council members that took time to join us, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. And to our speakers, they have done a very, 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 very big job and good job. Our registration, our registrar, the Ezra Bond and the board members, they listen to all our challenges. And I can assure you that we we'll have solutions to all the problems. Then to the mentoring that our president talked about, we're already working on setting up committees of our senior colleagues that will mentor the younger ones. So we're on board, sir. We're going to try our best to lay the foundation so that the people coming after us will build on what we have started. Thank you very much. And to our excellent moderator, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. It's usually said to everything that has a beginning, there is an end. So we are coming to the end of this very beautiful one day lecture. As we call on our colleague, yes, we might have Frank Ali to take the closing prayer. May we pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Father, we thank you for seeing us through today's Zoom lecture. It was indeed very fruitful. We pray that what we have learned today shall be put in practice to make us more direct relevant in our practice and make us a better professional body. May you continue to be with us even as we depart from these lectures. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank Congrats. you, everybody. Thank you, because Thank you, organizers. your presence has made our program a worthwhile event. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Congratulations. So Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.